Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Code Labs. I think we are on day three now, officially. Um, and uh, as we've been alluding to all this week when we've been talking about what you're going to be working on with your project and things like that, um, we are going to be joined today by a really special guest, um, Edward Jang, who is actually my first boss at, at Student R&D. He um, founded Student R&D, um, SR&D now, uh, in his basement way back in 2009. Um, and we're just going to be talking a little bit more about what I've sort of creatively named how to do the least work, um, but really just about how to, um, you know, make sure that you're prioritizing what work you want to do so that you end up making something that people want and don't spend a bunch of time on silly things that they don't want. So with that in mind, um, welcome, Edward. Hi, everyone. I'm Edward. Uh, I work at a company you might have heard of now called Uber, um, and I work on the um, I work on the uh, writers team, so that means I work on like actual the the iPhone app that everyone uses on a day to day basis. Um, so you know we spend a lot of time thinking about you know what uh, you know what things to build, what things we shouldn't be building, and how to make the most of our time. Um, but I mean this is something that we've been thinking about a lot. Like uh, you know not just me and, and my current job, but you know I worked at a few different startups in the past, um, and also you know working with different uh, people on their projects uh, at Student R and D back in the past. Um, you know, I, I think just making sure that you're building something that's uh, meaningful and uh, you know useful uh, is always great. You know, the, I, I think there's a difference between you know building something that is just cool and you know just a demo and show off. Um, but you know, like if and if if you want to build something for that purpose, uh, that that's totally fine. And uh, I, you know, I, I don't know like too much about uh, Code Labs over the summer, but you know, I I think if you're building something that you're uh, building for yourself, that that's awesome. Um, if you're building something and you want other people to use it, and sometimes you're wondering, you know, why aren't other people using it, or why why isn't this something interesting to, to others? Um, you know, we can start talking about, uh, you know, features uh, and benefits as a framework for thinking about, uh, you know, if the thing that you're building is something that people want to use, uh, and you know how it actually, um, you know, how it actually impacts them uh, in, yeah. a, in a fair way. Well, and I, I think to some extent too. You know, Code Labs is a place to explore. And when we were talking to Chris on um, Tuesday, he was talking about how a really important thing when he's thinking about what projects to work on in his free time is, you know, pushing yourself a little bit outside of the boundaries. So, you know, not necessarily technically building a product, but also at the same time, like everyone wants to make something that people like, right? I mean, to some extent, I feel like any project that at least I've worked on, and I think I'd probably you as well, like, Building something that people actually enjoy using is at least a part of it, right? Right, and it becomes really, really meaningful as well because it's not just you enjoying it and uh, using it for a while, um, but but it's also some you know when you start hearing other people saying, "Wow, like that that thing that you built is like really incredible and like useful," um, you know, or I I love it, like I use it on a day to day basis. I mean, that, that's something that uh, you're, it always uh, hit, hits you in the heart in some way. I mean, like. Even even more recently, you know, I, I, I was telling Tyler that I spent a lot of my free time playing poker. Uh, I built this uh, interactive spreadsheet that allows us to keep track of uh, sessions and um, allows like hosts and organizers to like keep track of those sessions really well. Um, and you know, several hosts that I know like use that and like use that to keep track of uh, their games and everything. And it, it's been really really uh, meaningful there. So. Um, you know, now I'm just like, wow, like, you know, I, 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 I'm not even building an app or something. I just built a spreadsheet template, <laughs> but you know, that's something that like other people are adopting, which is, uh, which is super cool. So, um, but Tyler, I, I think first thing we should really, uh, uh, talk about is really, you know, how are, uh, you know, what, what is a framework for, um, figuring out like if you're building something that people want. Um, and you know, like, how how do we even look at like what you're building? So yeah, for sure, I, I think that's a good question. So Ed, maybe what what is that framework? What when you're talking about a framework for figuring out what people want, um, what does that look like? So I think the first thing to really think about is, uh, you know, like everything that you're building is a feature, right? And you know, I, I know we we always like think about features, like you go to a website, and it's like features of this like. You know, of this coffee pot, or of this dishwasher, or of this bicycle, or whatnot, right? Um, but you know, I, I think it makes sense to really think about what what does a feature actually mean. So, Tyler, do you have any thoughts here? What 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 does the word feature mean to you? 
I mean, I think you're asking a leading question because I actually, <laughs> I have a little bit more of a, a background for this, but like to, to sort of maybe kick things off in just terms of brainstorming what a feature could mean. I mean, I, I think a lot of us think in terms of features in terms of like, there's a checklist, right? Like there's some things that we need to build um, and you check off, okay, login page, that's a, you know, that's got a check. You check off, um, you know, sharing button, that's a check. When I first thought of features, that's probably the first thing that popped into my head. But um, again, I, I'm, you know, you're, you and I, I think both know a little bit more about this. So I mean, <laughs> it's a little it, bit of a loaded question. Years, right? So, you know, yeah. like it, it, this sort of discussion, uh, I, I think can lend new insights. It's not like I've uh, really had a great uh, discussion with people on this uh, more recently. Um, and, you know, I think there's a, there's been a lot of experience that both of us have had that uh, changes that perspective as well. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I think when you think about the feature, right, it's like actual, like, very concrete, physical, or, you know, I mean, if you're building something electronic, um, not, but like a very concrete thing that um, what you're building does, right? So if you think about maybe like a, um, like a cup, right, you know, that might be like your feature is like, your cup is made out of glass, right? Or it has a handle on it, or, um, you know, it has a, um, you know, it has a lid, Right. Those, there's, those are all features um, of a cup. Um, I'm holding a cup right here uh, that I'm using to drink water. I mean, this is this does not have a handle, um, but it is made out of glass. Uh, you know, it does not have a lid. Um, but I mean, th th there's like different different features here that um, that impact like who might buy this cup, right? Like, I'm I'm very happy using it. There's some people that might not be very happy using this cup. Um, there's some instances where I may want a cup that this doesn't actually serve its purpose and I wouldn't use this cup for. And so all those different features are actually something that, you know, impacts like who buys it, who uses it, who appreciates it, and in what context. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that leads us into the discussion of then, like, as opposed to a feature, um, typically, like that we're, we're all, we're being very pedantic, I guess, in a certain sense, right? Like we're saying, okay, this is exactly what a feature is and this is what the other part of the title of this is, right? A benefit. Um, well, what's the, you know, why don't you maybe talk a little bit about the, the difference between the two of those and, you know, what, you know, how a benefit maybe leads to a feature? Well, let, let, let's, uh, I, I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Um, okay. I, I don't want to talk about benefits just yet, but, you know, I, I think right now, like we're talking about features of this cup and they seem very obvious. You're like, yeah, well, obviously, like some are made of glass, some are made of plastic, right? But, you know, like we can think, like, let's say we're making an IoT company, right? Because IoT pop companies are very popular. We're like, we're going to make a smart cup, right? And we can, you know, start adding as many techno gizmo like features to this cup as, uh, as possible. Um, some of them, you know, might actually be useful, but some of them might be crazy, right? Like, you know, what, what are some sort of electronic internet connected things that we should like add to our cup if we connect it to the internet? Right, well, yeah, and that's a good point. And I, I don't know if anyone follows it. There's a really good Twitter account um, called Internet of Shit. And uh, they just tweet out the silliest internet connected products available. So I think one of them is like an internet connected toilet. Um, and the idea is it will be able to uniquely identify who you know is using the toilet each time so that you can keep a log um <laughs> you know i'm not entirely we're, we're sure but a, yeah to some extent this is a real thing so, uh, sorry there's a, um, there's a tunnel that they shut down for like 12 hours to perform a software update oh i didn't even hear about that one <laughs> so um it was uh it was fortunately it was like for the fire control system you know so that that made a little more sense than when they're just like we're shutting down the tunnel to perform a software update and people were right. like since when does, <laughs> when does software affect the structural integrity of the tunnel, you know? Like, hopefully it doesn't, right? Um, but yeah, like, what, what sort of, like, uh, give me ideas. Like, we're building an internet-connected cup. What, what do you want in it? Yes, that's a good question. Um, let me think. I mean, Starbucks kind of did this. And the one that Starbucks has, has, like, a, um, it's got, like, a battery in it, and it can, like, heat up the, the coffee or something like that. And, like, it's got a charger that I think can tell you some sort of information about how much of things you've you've consumed. Cool. Um, I saw another one out there that does exist. It was like an Indiegogo and it allowed you to um, it like tracked how much water you drank through the day and okay. then you could get graphs of your water consumption if that's something that you wanted for some reason. Um, so quantified self is a is a big one that I've seen a lot of people do. The other things you could do, I don't know, like you could make a tweet when you run out of water. 
Um, Ed, maybe you know very well uh, from the first code day, uh, the very first code day we ever held, if people ran out of soda, they could just, uh, you know, they could just tweet at you and you would bring them one. So maybe we could automate this, right? An, an automated cup that tweets at your friends to bring you more water or soda. Right, um, you know, make, make a billion dollar company you know, called uh, you know, Cup Dash or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but yeah, so I mean, those sound really reasonable, right? Like, you know, track how much water you're drinking, uh, something with a warmer or even a chiller to like automatically like keep your uh, drinks cold or warm. Yeah, that, that sounds really reasonable, right? And those sound very reasonable, like even though, you know, kind of superfluous things to add to, to a cup. But um, did I drop for a second? No, you're still no, here. Okay, okay. So the the third the third screen that's showing up uh, kind of froze up for a second. So, yeah. uh, anyways, um, but you know, uh, let's start. You know, let's start thinking about other ideas, right? Like, what if we added a laser pointer to my cup, right? Like, you know, what if we added a receipt printer? And you know, uh, you know, like I don't know. Maybe, maybe I want like an atmospheric pressure detector as well, like um, and a CO two sensor, just I don't know, just because, right? You know, suddenly, suddenly the cup that we have uh, starts seeming like a little wacky, and you're like, "Why? Why the heck does this cup have a CO2 sensor on it?" I guess like maybe, maybe you'd want to measure the amount of CO2 gassing out from the diet cola that you put in there. But um, you know, honestly, we're, we're, like we're getting further and further away from like things that just even logically make any sense at all. I think, uh, yeah, right. But you know, it's like, hey, like I like laser pointers, right? Like. Laser pointers are cool. Why don't I put on one on a cup, right? Like you, you don't want to buy it, Tyler? Um, you know, I really don't want to offend you, but I don't think I want to buy your laser pointer cup, Ed. <laughs> All right. So I think I, I think that's that's a good uh, good segue into the next thing, right? Like, you know, these are all specific features. You know, individually, features are really useful. Um, but you know, they're not. Uh, you know, the reason why you're building something is to package multiple features together, right? And when you package multiple features together, you try to benefit, um, you know, someone in some way. And we were talking about the, um, uh, like the cup with a heater, right? Like built-in heater. Um, you know, what wh what is the benefit? Like, you know, I I, I don't want to just increase the entropy locally in the, that environment, right? Like, why why do I want a heater in my cup? Yeah, well, and that's a that's a good question. Um, and I think that that's the way that you asked it is the good thing. Like, why do I want that? And I guess the answer for me could be I want warm coffee. Um, and I personally have a way that I've already solved that that's a little bit cheaper, which is a thermos. But um, I assume that that's kind of what they're going for, right? Is people want warm coffee. So automated heating coffee cup. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, now that that's a benefit, right? Like, you know, you want warm coffee. So, uh, so you're you're gonna add a heater to it, right? Like, you know, now now those are things that can give us like other ideas for like um, for things to features to be putting in this cup, right? You know, I want warm coffee, so I want a laser pointer, so I can add you know a few milliwatts to my. No, okay, that doesn't make sense. But like, I want warm coffee. The coffee is now gonna be warm. Um, do I want maybe a handle so I don't burn myself when I touch the cup, right? Or do I want insulation so uh, the energy, the battery lasts longer, like on the on the uh, internet connected cup, right? Uh, those are other benefits um, that you know that ultimately like work together um, with 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 the with the existing features um, to create like now a coherent product. Right. Yeah, and I noticed actually in the notes you sent me earlier today, um, you know, a counter example to that that you put in was like a nonstick cooking pen is useful, but a nonstick laptop might not be, right? And like. It, you're the way I think of looking at it is packaging up features is a really interesting one, and like the features have to be related to some ideal, you know, person. Like some type of person wants right. some type of job done, or um, you know, I don't know. Like what what are the different ways to look at like what are some so, some ways to find potential benefits if you're if you're talking to someone like, you know, are there um, are there specific things that you would look for in the, in that case? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it depends on the group of people, right? You know, I, I think, you know, when we when we look at uh, when we look at products, we start uh, looking at uh, types of users. Uh, we don't really, you know, we don't want to use stereotypes too much, but we want to start thinking about like, you know, types of users that have a certain uh, preference or have a certain goal to accomplish, um, and 
and, and start thinking about like, you know, what is something useful for them, right? So now, like you're saying like, hey, like you don't need a, a, a coffee cup with a heater in it because you just use a thermos, right? Well, maybe there is like a type of person that, um, you know, that has a completely different workflow, right? Maybe like uh, they are at an office without like a heater or a water heater, right? Um, or water boiler or kettle or whatnot. Um, and they want to be able to make instant coffee or tea without, um, without buying a kettle uh, and, or without using the stove, right? And, you know, now suddenly you can see like, oh, wow, like a, a cup that has a built-in heater that can now heat up the water makes a little more sense because like their, you know, their workflow is completely different to yours. Uh, and, you know, now you can say, okay, like how many people like have this problem? How many people are like stuck at an office or a place without a kettle and like to drink coffee or tea? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, well, and the word that I kept hearing you bring up there too, that I think is a good way to start to look at it is like problem, like not always, but I think oftentimes a benefit is something that like solves a problem that a person really has. Where it's like, I've never thought to myself, man, I wish my cup had a battery in it. But if I'm starting to think, okay, like I don't have, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I need, you know, a thermos really doesn't work for me, but I really want hot, you know, beverages. That's more of a problem, I guess, than a you know, I, I really need my cup to have a laser pointer on it, right? It's not, that's not a problem I have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just imagine like, a, you know, an Ikea ad for one of their cups and it's like new and improved with 187 watt hours of capacity. You're just yeah. like, wait, what? Yeah, well, and that's a, that's a good point. I mean, Ikea, I think does a good job at this, right? Like a lot of the Ikea products are very, um, you know, they're, they are very good at like, paying attention to what people actually want and not putting anything else in there because it just like it increased the cost for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you'll see that they, they do have different types of cups, right? They'll have uh, clear cups so you can see what's in it. Um, opaque cups so you can't see how dirty the coffee stains are on the inside, right? You know, you have cups with insulation, cups without insulation, right? Like, you know, again, like if I'm throwing a party, I might not want to use a glass cup because, you know, now my problem is, uh, you know, I need to wash everything or get rid of all the dirty cups in some manner. Um, and also, I don't want to break stuff. Uh, and so now, like, a glass cup doesn't work for me, but, you know, maybe a plastic cup does. So, right. you know, every all of these features, like, uh, combine to uh, bring a set of coherent benefits. Um, and, you know, if you think about if those benefits make sense together, uh, using the same context, then uh, now, now that's suddenly really powerful. Well, and so let me ask you this too. I mean, we're talking about benefits making sense together. Like you have your cup, I have my mug, which are both ways of holding liquid. Um, clearly there's also, and you know, like someone somewhere has that smart water bottle that tracks how much water is in it. Like that, that's also a, a piece of this too, right? It's like that not everyone has the same problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that that's something that you know has been coming up in a lot of corporate contexts lately especially in uh, tech companies right about diversity um because you know not everyone does have um you know the same problems all across the world uh, all, all across the globe um you know different people have different problems and perceive things in different ways and that's why it's like really important to have uh, diverse teams uh, work, working on projects together uh, actually I, th I think there's this really cool story about uh the invention of spicy cheetos um and so have, have you heard of this out? Yeah, I have. I, I, read, I think I've probably read the same article as you, but I, I don't know if you want to go into it because I think that is a really interesting example of a company missing a potential problem in a sense that people have. Yeah, why don't you go for it? I don't remember the story too well. <laughs> okay. Um, as I remember it, they're uh, Frito-Lay, the, the chip company, I think is the correct company that owns Cheetos, but the, the chip company um, was... You know, they were their sales were doing okay, but it kind of like flatlined. They they weren't really making a lot of progress. And the CEO was like, "Hey, like everyone, you know, go out there, like think of yourself as an owner of this company and do things." And there was this janitor who was, um, you know, Latino background, like he was just a janitor at the facility. And he was like, "Man, like there really is no product that this company makes that speaks to the the sort of taste that my family is used to, which is like spicy foods." Um, and so he sort of took it upon himself to just go out there and get a bag of Cheetos and put some spice on it. And uh, 
you know, brought it back, started taking it around to people and it, they, you know, they, everyone sort of liked it. And so he actually like called up the CEO at that point and was like, Hey, I, I did it. I did the thing you told me to do. And of course, like, you know, corporations being corporations that, you know, there's a little bit more in between, but you know, the, the TLDR, I guess is, is really like, yeah, there was a, a janitor who just identified that no one was making a type of product that he wanted. And he thought that there were other people who wanted the same thing. And, you know, he went out and, and did it and it turned out to be a really pro popular product. I don't know if I, I, if that lines up with um, with your recollection of it as well. Yeah, that, that sounds uh, pretty, yeah, pretty on point. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. So, you know, I had a note here, um, you know, we always talk, uh, talk about this uh, when, you know, when we were uh, uh, working on things like, you know, when I was back at Student R&D was, um, you know, if you go to a business school or, you know, like take business classes at a college, um, you know, a lot of times they'll actually have you work the, uh, you know, in the opposite way, right? You know, right now we're just saying like, hey, think about like, what features are you adding to whatever you're doing? Um, what, how does that actually benefit whoever's using it? Um, and then, you know, think about like, you know, in what context people are using it, uh, you know, in, in in like a lot of uh, you know MBA style thinking or, or whatnot, like people will actually have the uh, go from the opposite end uh, to find uh, a solution, right? They'll they'll say, hey, um, there's this type of person that does this, and then they experience these problems. How can we find a solution? How can, how, how can we find a you know product or a set of features or whatnot uh, that that solve their problem, right? Um, and so that might be something from the lines of like, hey, like. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of teenagers hanging around like this area and they like, you know, hanging out at like a shop and, um, you know, buying like, you know, uh, desserts or sweets or whatever. And, you know, uh, we should open up like a dessert shop over here, right? Um, or, uh, you know, th things like that. Like, it, it's not even just, uh, it's not even just, you know, physical products or like, uh, you know, electronic products that you're building, but, you know, just uh, businesses or services in general, right? You can you can use the same framework to to start thinking about that as well. Yeah, well, and so maybe more of a concrete example of something that we actually did do was I think back in the early days of of SR and D, we were a makerspace, um, and people weren't really coming very often, and so we were starting to think. I, re I remember around winter break in two thousand eleven, we were starting to think like, what are some things that people want that we could do over the you know over the winter break and um adam and yourself and and i were kind of just thinking oh like people like video games um people like being around other people and having fun and you know like drinking soda and stuff like that what if we just got everyone together for a weekend and had this fun you know sort of like party but then they can also code i think at some point you wrote it's like a party um but like with coding or something i, I don't remember the exact <laughs> The, the exact term, but like that was kind of, you know, what we came up with was like, we were looking for something that the people who could come to our workspace would want to do. So, you know, we like people like us like coding and they like hanging out with people. So let's just get them to hang out with people for, for a weekend and, and code something. And obviously that turned out very well for us with Code Day. Yeah. And I, I think that one of the insights there was that um, in terms of like the, um, uh, the attendees, right? Like a lot of people didn't have the time to just come consistently to makerspace to utilize um, the tools and to work on those projects over a long period of time. Uh, but over a short period of time, you know, everyone had lots of, uh, you know, everyone had the drive, right? You know, people were always like, uh, especially, you know, uh, when you're in college, you're procrastinating left and right. I mean, I procrastinate left and right as well. Tyler knows that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, you know, people were, people don't have the time to be uh, working on uh, things for months. So we turned that from, you know, a, um, a, we, we, re we almost like removed that feature from like what we're, the services that we were offering uh, in a sense um, and turned that uh, feature around, right? Because before the feature was like, hey, you can work on a project for months at student R&D. And now the feature is at, with Code Day is like, hey, you can, you can work on something over the course of a weekend. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm a good example of how that turned out to be right is like, I think in the entire time the workspace was around, we had maybe five projects and six projects maybe in, in like three years. And then, you know, at Code Day, all of a sudden, the very first Code Day we had, 
I don't know how many projects were made at that first one. It was probably 10 or 10 or 20. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, think about that, right? Like, you know, towards the future, you can work on projects for months. The benefit, like, you know, again, is that uh, you can build something like really crazy, amazing, right, over months. But um, one of the other, you know, non-benefits uh, is that uh, it takes a lot of time, right? Um, and so now, if you say like that feature is, hey, you can work on it for a weekend, just get some focus time in, and then you can like literally forget about everything that happened, or cherish your memories about everything that happened, but not have that impact of the like, next few months of your life. Um, then you know that that's like that's a huge huge benefit. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So then thinking back to, um, you know, we're talking about going at it this, from this other side. These are some things that we did. What would you say the process for that? You know, if you were to, maybe maybe you could walk us through an example. If you were to build an app and, you know, generally, you know, I want to target people who are like me, like what what process would you go through for, for you know, for doing that? Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's I think, kind of difficult in a sense, and that's why, um, it's hard for people to build new apps from scratch, uh, especially in, uh, you know, I think a few years ago, like social apps were like all the rage, right? But, you know, honestly, uh, the problem with social apps is no one really knew, had a really great idea for how they wanted to interact with people online. And so what ended up happening is most, uh, many companies were just experimenting and uh, literally just like, rapidly like building prototypes, seeing if people like them, and if not, throwing them away and uh, trying trying something completely different. And, um, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, I think, a little bit of controversy, uh, controversy around some uh, people in tech around like whether or not that was a great way of uh, building things. Um, but yeah, for like social things, uh, where like no one had any idea what they wanted, it, it wasn't the, the worst way of, uh, of building a product. I think the most recent product, as I said, uh, I you know I built was like uh, that spreadsheet that kept track of you know everyone's uh, you know the state of a poker game. Um, you know the the great thing is here, uh, you know I I literally started um, the system uh, by keeping track of things on a piece of paper, right? Uh, and as I kept track of things on a piece of paper, I was like, okay, well like one problem that I have is that things aren't time stamped whenever I write down on a piece of paper. So I don't even remember like, you know, if I made an operation and I wrote, oh, this person like added on another $200 in chips, right? Like, I, I don't know if that actually happened. Like, when did I put that on? Did I just write it like two seconds ago? Did I write it like 30 minutes ago? I have no way of auditing that log, right? So, um, you know, there, like I literally just said, okay, why don't I bring it into, you know, a spreadsheet? Like I, I can like, then have an auto tag the, uh, the time where I make an entry. Now I make an entry and now it's like, okay, well, like at the end, I actually have to manually edit, add everything up and then figure out like how much everyone cashed in for or cashed out for. Um, now I can say, okay, well, I can have the computer do that, right? Now I can have that sum up um, for things. So like every time, like I basically had a problem where it's like, okay, like I need to do this. It's annoying. And then I come up with a solution to make it less annoying for me. Um, and yet now, like literally, like half of the things in our game uh, are automated because you know uh, we just you know every single time I'm just like I need to do this step, right? I need to do this thing. Um, and I was like, well, I can just automate it. So yeah, if you're building something like a social app, it's going to be hard to um, uh, to do. But I, I think some some things, for instance, like if you're um, building a tool. Um, uh, tools are like really great because usually you will know someone that will want to use the tool and every time they use the tool they'll have like a piece of feedback for another pain point right like if you hand make a you know if you're you know you hand make like a uh, a knife or something for someone to use right and they use it every day in the kitchen they might say hey the grip is kind of off like I have to grip it this way and it kind of sucks or the balance is kind of off and uh, or I wish it was lighter. I wish it was heavier. Like I always like using it to like, you know, I, I decided to bring that out, outdoors and chop down trees. And so now like, you know, <laughs> I want it to be a lot heavier, right? You know, think, things like that, or have a long handle that I can swing, right? Um, well, and that kind of gets into one of the difficult parts too, is that, I, and I don't know that we've explicitly said this, but I think it's been kind of implied throughout is like, 
the benefits are things that solve a problem for a person. The features are ultimately the things that do that. And like you said, you package them up, right? And it, it provides a benefit. And one of the difficult things sometimes is like, people don't always exactly know what they want either. So, you know, you built this app for, for tracking your poker thing. That's a good way to solve it. And it's good because you're, you know, your own potential user. So you don't even really need to think about that. On the other hand, maybe the better way to solve it would be to make a smart poker chip. Um, I don't, I don't know that that's actually a good idea. Um, you know, but you could theoretically make like a smart poker chip and that could potentially provide the same benefit as well. Right. And I'm sure someone somewhere has tried to, to kickstart that and probably no one has backed it. So that probably turns out that's not the right feature to solve that benefit. But that's, uh, that's kind of another piece of this too, right. Is like the figuring out what it is that you're going to do in the end. Yeah. Um, and you know, e e even then, right. Like you, you also have to sometimes think about like, you no. Know, uh, is what someone's asking you uh, reasonable? Because, you know, in, in that kitchen knife example, right? Like, let's say if I build a great kitchen knife, which is great for like, you know, cutting large vegetables and, you know, hunks of meat, right? Um, and someone might actually be like, hey, like, I love your knife, but I'm using it for chopping logs. Um, but, you know, the majority of people are like, I, I'm like having a great time with, with this, right? Um, you know, using it in the kitchen and then someone's like, I use it for cutting logs, you know, and I just wish you made it heavier and had a handle, like a large, like three foot long handle. Um, you know, you might, you might say like, cool, like I'm glad, I'm glad you found this use for it, but like the majority of people don't want that. <laughs> like I, I piss off everyone who uses this knife in the kitchen by turning you this knife into an ax, right? Yeah. Well, and that's and that in itself is a good point. And I think something a lot of people get wrong is like you can't build a product for everyone. And it's like I think some people think sometimes, especially as you start to get more and more into, you know, maybe not now, but in college and beyond, you start to think about making money from something and people just assume, oh, well, if I'm already making all this money by selling to chefs in the kitchen, I could also add loggers in here. And then, you know, now I can just double my profits. And, uh, you know, I, th I think that Kind of what you're getting at is like that isn't really how it works right right i mean you know maybe you can separate things out and like come up with a new line of knives for logging right but you i mean th that's the thing right like with especially with software you don't have like this physical cruft uh that might be added um when you add features uh but you know it's it still it still is felt right you know that that is the difference between um you know you using like you know, Google Docs versus like Microsoft Word, right? You know, like Word has like a lot more features. Um, and sometimes you feel like, hey, like I don't need all, all this uh, stuff to, um, to to be doing what I'm doing, right? Like, or, or I'm sure there are many apps where it's like, uh, you know, you, you, you start, you're like, hey, I'm going to try doing some video editing. What's the good software for video editing? And people are like, Final Cut Pro. And you're like, okay, cool. Let me download that and use it. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Like yeah, I don't, and, and then so many and buttons then, and yeah, it's like yeah, exactly. And then you end up using iMovie because you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I, and iMovie, iMovie was made for someone, you know, in that that case. Like an example that I really like to use. Um, this is taking a habit that I got from you of actually just using chairs as examples for everything because there's always chairs around. Um, is like. Uh, if if I were in a school and I'm looking at the chairs there, they're like really uncomfortable. Um, they're not like particularly like they don't really have any of the amenities I want from a chair. They're not padded, anything else. But for a school, like they want chairs that are probably stackable um, or at least easily moved. They want chair. Yeah, I mean, easily moved, I guess, is really even the benefit of stackable, right? Easily moved, maybe could take up less space if they needed them to in a warehouse. They want something that is going to be cheap. Um, and, you know, because they're going to need to buy a thousand of them. And so they don't want to, you know, they, they don't have the budget for that. And they probably don't care about student comfort. If anything, you know, students being too comfortable might make them fall asleep. At the same time, if I'm buying a chair for myself, I want a completely different set of things. And so, like, it's funny because you can make, you know, lumberjacks is okay. It's, you know, axe versus knife is even a little bit right. different. But even if you're making exactly the same thing, you could be selling to different people and, you know, they're going to have drastically different sets of features that are needed to get at the fact that they don't really want the same thing at all. Right. Like durability is also a concern and right. uh, also like, you know, cleanliness, right? Like it's, you know, n now if the school decides to buy cloth padded chairs, suddenly every quarter they have to steam clean all the chairs and who's going to do that? Like, you know, 
that's going to cost way more than the chairs themselves over the course of a few years. So. Yeah, that's a good point. And I always wondered why, you know, public transit sometimes, I think BART in San Francisco does this right, where they have some cars that have cloth seats. And it's like, why, you know, if you're a public transit company, why would you do that? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Ed, we are running short-ish on time. We usually like to aim for 45 minutes and we're at 35. Like, what are your, you know, are there any closing thoughts that you have for students on this? Obviously, I think not all of this is going to be immediately applicable, but, you know, how do you think that this is useful in, in personal projects and what do you think people should be doing at this point? Right. I, I think, you know, I, again, like every time I, uh, I talk about this, uh, the disclaimer is, uh, you know, decide whether or not this is applicable for you, because, you know, a lot of the things that we talk about here is like if you're building something for other people um, and you want other people to use it and you're wondering why other people aren't uh, downloading your Minecraft mod that makes adds laser pointers to, uh, you know, all the cubes of sand. Right. You know, um, again, like that, you know, th that that's that's what we're, we're, you know, trying to get at here, right? But like, if you want to add laser pointers to the, every cube of sand and Minecraft and, you know, and then have every chicken blow up just because, you know, it'd be fun, like go and do that because, you know, that I think that's way more important um, than uh, having like, a, you know, making a Minecraft mod that, uh, that, that has like millions of downloads, right? Because like, honestly, that's gonna ca cause a lot more problems, <laughs> especially if you're in high school right now um uh then just you know building something for fun right like um you know there's always like a lot of issues with like you know getting something popular and you know quote unquote successful or, or or so on and so forth uh, but i think it's a good thing to keep in mind right because like you know when you're showing you know when you're showing someone else hey look i made chickens explode in minecraft right like um you know realizing that like you know that that might not be some, you know, that might be exciting to a few people, um, but not exciting to uh, like a million people, right? Um, is like a good expectation to have. Um, and I think it's just having that expectation and um, figuring out again, what are your goals and what do you want your project to accomplish and not to accomplish uh, is really, really important. Yeah, well, and that that kind of goes back to the the title of this too, which is like doing the least work possible. Which is, you know, if you want to build whatever it is, then that's that's totally fine. But don't at the same time, you know, don't just make a list of this is what it needs to have and kind of do that forever just because it's on the list. If you wanna if you wanna build a Minecraft mod that people use, and originally you said it's gonna have you know 15 different things that it does, and you want people to use it, it's not just because you think it would be fun to build this mod, like. You know, paying attention to you know that goal um, is important. You know, what what sort of things do people want to want to take out of it? So you know, not doing the things that maybe people don't actually care about just because it's on your list, but actually starting to think about. I think this is the thing that happens all the time at Code Day, right? Is people don't present at the end of Code Day because they're like, oh man, I set out, I told everyone I was going to do like these this eight level game, and it's only got seven levels. I couldn't get the last level done before presentations. I can't. I can't present it. Like no one's going to want to see this. And it's like you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, in a sense, maybe the benefit to what you're making is just I want to learn cool technology, and it doesn't matter what features you put in it at all, as long as you know you're constantly doing things. Right. So. And I mean, there's a lot to learn. Like you know, your your sand cubes have lasers now, and your chickens explode. The water is like a random shade of blue, darker, uh, and then the skies uh, glow uh, glow purple like at night. Like you know. Things like that, like those are all like you. You're probably actually going to learn more than like if you're going to create like a cohesive set of like you know, uh, you know, cookware for uh, for Minecraft, where you know you have like different like cooking appliances and tools and whatnot, um, because you'll be touching like way bigger portion of the uh, the code and uh, modding a way like larger portion of uh, things here. Um, but you know, again, like someone, you're like, oh yeah, um, you know, download this mod. It makes your trees grow faster, and uh, you're like, oh, oh, cool. And then suddenly, like, their chickens are exploding, and <laughs> their blocks of sands have layers of pointers on them, and you know, the sky turns purple when it's night, and they're just like, what the, heck? What, what did I just download? But you know, someone <laughs> again, like, if you're like, hey, like. Download this if you like cooking. Now you can build uh, build Gordon Ramsay's kitchen in Minecraft, and you know, and actually like do all these recipes. 
like someone would download it and be like, oh, okay, that's that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Well, and maybe for Code Labs, even if your goal is to just learn something and you make the chickens explode and then you make the water turn blue and you're like, I'm done with Minecraft, I've learned everything I can from this, go on to something else because that's, you know, you've satisfied the benefit that you're hoping to get out of it. Too, so. Right. right. Yeah. Cool. Well, Ed, anything else you wanted to, to leave the students with? Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I think uh, we had a really great discussion here about features, benefits, and, you know, all the uh, different ways you can apply it. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that was useful, and I, I really uh, hope to you know see some cool cool projects come out of the summer. And if someone makes that Minecraft mod uh, that makes chickens explode, and I don't even know how you have laser pointers on blocks of sand, but you know, you know. <laughs> if you go on a desert, the entire game is going to crash. Huh? You go on a desert, and the entire game is just going to crash or just become a rape. <laughs> it's just a giant laser party. <laughs> So, okay, cool. uh, let, let me know. Let me know, and then uh, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a prize or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you, Edward Jang, uh, the original founder of Student R and D, um, former employee of uh, Padmapper, and um, what was the other one that you worked for? Uh, Stormpath. Stormpath, and now engineer at Uber. Um, and uh, hopefully, some of our students can follow similarly really interesting paths and, and do cool stuff. So, thanks again for for talking with us tonight. That's great. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Have a good one.